The hope and goal is to turn. Nothing in the something. Get everything we deserve. Pray that we What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of This Whatever with the Bishop. Magic Moments with the Moldies present. I am your host Bishop Bang and I got my co-host Funny Man Jeff. Yeah, yeah. yep. And we are in the building on February 1st. It's yeah, February. we got the hell through January. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ooh, we have a guest today, right? And you know we do our thing. Uh, we, we investigate people. And I don't know why we just keep getting these guests that we can't find. Is second one this year? Yeah, Is this the second one this year? Yeah, yeah, we couldn't find none. He's not a social media guy at all. So, and this one, she is kind of. Right. But leaves no trail. She leaves no trail. <laughs> no trail. All no work. Not giving up no tea. There's nothing yeah, wrong with that. So, yeah. I, I appreciate it. But I do know, okay, you're a Susquehanna graduate. Absolutely. 1998? I'm, I'm what I like to call a, a mixed breed. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, I graduated from Hanna. Graduated from start off at Susquehanna Township High School, but I'm born and raised in the Berg. Okay. I went to the Berg all the way up until eighth grade. The last three months is when I started at the Hanna. Okay. So, all right. so I'm like Harrisburg. But your family got most of them unknown. Family got about the hood. We had one foot in the hood, one foot in the Hanna. Yeah. Okay. So it's like people see me be like, I know her, but I don't know her, right? Because right, you don't. Okay. Yeah. So that's how, <laughs> that's how I am. So yeah, I went to the Berg for a long time, okay. like. All through school yeah. up until, you know what I mean, eighth grade situation happened and okay. um, moved to the Hannah. And um, you have a son, Jalen. Jalen is my yes. bae. Yes, you yeah. have Jalen. Yes. Scrappy young man. How old is he, 16? He is 17. 17. Damn. We getting old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we! Oh. Y'all just getting started. Yeah. I, I feel it, though. <laughs> you are the founder and the, what would I want to call it, host? Yeah. Of uh, Minority Report. Absolutely. 717. Yes. Black Business. Yes. She is a pillar for black people. Yes. Right on. And the whole essence. The whole the and whole black excellence. Yes. I'm with it. Yes. That's my thing. And you've had a, you've had some people in the Minority Report who were guests on this show. I've had people yeah, for real. Yeah, I've yeah, had, yeah, yeah, I've, 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 I've had I've a couple. Yeah. 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 So, Miss Michelle Smith. Yes. How you doing? Good. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to learn some things I didn't know. I know, right? Because we, we go back. Yeah. I'm just here. I'm just here so I don't get fired. To Macedonia. <laughs> Macedonia Baptist Church. Church. Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. That's where we Okay. Met. Listen, do y'all remember? I, was, I grew up in Greater Zion. Do you remember when Macedonia, Greater Zion, and Goodwin got together and used to sing? All the time. We used to have a massive choir. It was crazy. Yeah, it was little. I ain't want to be there, so I ain't know what was going on. Yeah. They, 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 they hooked up all the teen choirs. Y'all did have a big so. We did. It yeah. was crazy. Miss Diane was our choir director, right? Yes. See, look at you. You know See? that stuff I was, I was a little know. kid, but I, I looked forward to that. Oh, uh, yeah. That was a thing. I just remember the cookies and orange juice. Oh, man. And face it. That's it. That's all I remember. And now he's the bishop. Yeah, my uncle was, was bishop. bishop. Was it was a deacon? Right. That's all. I remember. Yeah, my dad was a deacon. So yeah. here we here, and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so and we're gonna let you tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh wow! Well, like, like I, I said, said I'm, 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 I mean, like I said, I'm I'm born and raised here in the bird. Um, this is this is home for me. You know, okay. for 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 now, I have no idea where God's gonna place me, but this is home. I, I love being from Harrisburg. I think. Harrisburg is a very unique place, mm -hmm. yeah. um, being where we're situated. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like being between, like it's driving distance to everything. Okay. So I think it's a very like safe place in comparison to other places. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, very family oriented type of right, city. Right, right. But if you're looking for that fast life or an excite excitement or culture, or anything, right. you know what I'm saying? It's like three hour drive to New right. York, right. like hour forty five from. So what you saying this ain't it if you're looking for that. Yeah, no, I'm saying it, it this, this is it if you're trying to live. Okay, yep. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to cost live. Cost of living type of deal. Right, cost yeah. of living. Like, if you're trying to live and, mm -hmm. and like, make your money stretch, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is the spot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody trying to park in New York every day. Right, no. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you want to go to Manhattan spend, for the weekend. Or spend $2,000 for a two-bedroom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a yeah. yeah. for one bedroom yeah. or a closet. Yeah, yeah. 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 a box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But you know, what I mean, here, Philly, New York, Baltimore, and you go the opposite direction, going to Philly. Okay. You know, I mean, going right. to Pittsburgh. I mean, it's a very, you know, what I mean, like unique place. But what I also noticed about Harrisburg, and this is how I came to start doing my blog, is Harrisburg. When it comes to the black population, right. it's more of us than anybody else in Edinburgh. Right. We don't run nothing. 
yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Like we we don't have like a whole lot of black owned businesses here. Um, our city council is starting to get more quote unquote inclusive and, and diverse, but we don't make a lot of decisions okay. here. Um, as far as okay. like our economy, um, our school districts, like that kind of right. stuff. The things that impact us that we pay for every day. Okay. Um, I at one point was an advocate for self-sufficiency. You know, I actually um, trained in a program through Dolphin County. Uh, it was called Getting Ahead. In a 16 week program mm -hmm. and we take individuals who want to become self-sufficient mm -hmm. and we actually um, facilitate we don't teach them mm -hmm. we basically facilitate this conversation and we lead the conversation into them examining their lifestyle and their spending habits and also the, the uh, local economy in the community and our legislators and how our money is spent mm -hmm. um, and through that you know I mean I really realized that we are just so far behind economically mm. and just through the conversation then it started me to reading certain books you okay. know what I mean about like Poweronomics, Dr. Claude, okay. you know Anderson and different different books about just the economy period and how it, affect, how it affects black America and at the end of the day everything out here costs right. and we collectively are never going to be in control of anything because we don't have the money to finance anything okay. we can't finance you know, political campaigns, okay. and we need political leaders right. who are, you know, I mean, creating laws or okay. administering current okay. laws that don't put us behind. Okay. As far as like lending. I should have brought fucking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like as, as far as like like mortgage rates, car loan rates. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those yeah. kind of things. Like they, there are literally laws in place that keep people with pit, like with melanin in their skin from mm. advancing. They charge mm. us extra for everything. Mm. That doesn't change unless we have legislators mm -hmm. who are in place to change those laws who have our best interests at heart. Right, right. The problem is, even within politics and even within, you know what I mean, corporate America, it's like the, f the higher you go and the further you get away from those who are in poverty, the more you feel as though that you're removed from the movement mm -hmm. or you're removed mm -hmm. from the struggle. Mm -hmm. So then you find yourself, okay. you find yourself saying, well, I ain't struggling. Okay. You right. know what I mean? You right. start making, you start... You know what I mean? You start making deals with, with individuals in higher places that okay. benefit you that don't necessarily it's benefit, benefit everybody people. else. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like with a company, a lot of companies, especially um, publicly traded companies, they make their interest, I mean, they make their decisions on the best interest of their shareholders, not right. their employees, right. or not even the end user. Right. You know what I mean? They'll put out a product knowing it ain't safe. So can I, let me ask you a question. So is, <laughs> it, is it true to say um, you're only, so even though being black, you're only still as strong as your community? Absolutely, like it still it still takes a village, right? Even if you're removed from it, even if you even if you're removed from it, because what you fail to realize, like those same people you pass on your way up, oh, you gonna see them when when they come down. Just them? like when we look at our celebrities, you know what I'm saying? When they live in a good life, they ain't they not thinking about the hood, right, right? But it's then when they make a mistake, when they fall, they make a moral failure. That's when they come back and they like they want all they want the whole hood when to they support them. They got jerked in their contract. <laughs> then, then, it, then it's then it's all black excellence. We need the hood. We, I need black people to support me, bro. You was not thinking about us right. when you was over there right. kissing Will Ferrell in the mouth on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, now, now you on Netflix or you know I me mean, whatever documentary PBS wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what right. I mean? Or on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Now you want us to all rally right. behind you, bro? Okay. Beat it. I'm not. I'm not that one. See, oh, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know if y'all really. Yeah, you're ready for me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I wasn't you sure. I wasn't sure. Do you? I just wasn't sure how far y'all were going to take it. Go ahead and go. Yeah. So I've been thinking about a lot of the stuff. Like, granted, I don't. I didn't really increase my income, but when I moved out the, I live out uh, near Walmart, mm -hmm. and I had moved off of Swat Air Street. I don't want to use the word guilt, but when I left the inner city, knowing oh, yeah. what everybody's going through, and I finally got my oh, little peace of mind out here, it's this thing that, that I remember, oh, like, yeah. uh, and then, I sell out? yeah, two of my sons, like, are still, like, in the hood, but they're there, mom, like, oh, like, mm -hmm. but the goal is for me, like, reach back, I don't, but go ahead, keep going, but I feel like what you're, right, I mean, I think everybody who makes it, mm -hmm. if we just want to use that as a blanket mm -hmm. description, you know, anyone who makes it, you know what I'm saying, you do feel a, a certain level of, I should give back. In what way can I give back? Mm -hmm. And it don't matter what you do; it's not never going to be enough. Mm -mm. It's just not. I mean, it's just not. Our needs are too are too many. 
Okay. We're too fractured. Um, mm. Just as a people, you know what I'm saying. But the your con, we're just how you settle your conscience. You settle your conscience by doing the best you can with what you have where you are. My thing is poverty and supporting black-owned businesses. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, what I mean? That's mm-hmm. that's my that's my lane. Mm-hmm. Whatever your lane is, if your lane is midget football, run that lane. You know, if your if your lane is cutting hair and it's like okay, at, on this day at this hour, I get free haircuts. If that's all you can do, you do that thing in the spirit of excellence. You did a part in a in a, in a and then your part and my part and your part. Then it all, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. It all is all beneficial to everybody. Because I know I can't do everything. I don't, I don't know how to give people CPR. I don't give, you know what I'm I don't give blood. Right. I don't run a food bank. But this thing right here, advocating for black-owned businesses, right. that's my lane, right? So I really push for us really circulating our black dollar. Going back to, you know, just corporate America and politics. Because I work in politics. So I know where those donation dollars go, where those campaign dollars go, and they're going Not back. Always to. They're going. They're going back mm-hmm. to fund legislation that says cops don't need body armor, you know, or they don't need they don't need uh, cameras, dash cams, body cams, right. none of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? They know their agenda. Because yeah. they know their agenda. They know their agenda. They they already have an agenda. Right. They just need the money to fund right. it. Right. Gotcha. Same thing we need. Not only do we need an agenda and we need money to fund the agenda, we need basic stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We need streets that don't have potholes. We yeah. need kids that, that can get free lunch and free breakfast. Because that, that was the thing this That week. was just this week. You know what I'm saying? You got, a, you got a school district right now that's not giving free nothing. Right. And for a lot of kids, because I volunteered at the Boys and only Girls Club. Of the day. That's their only meal of the day. My mom, she's been working for the school district since the since the old old middle school, the old mm-hmm. middle school, and she told me... Um, now, now they shut the school down for no reason now. Yeah. But Crazy. when we were growing up, like, weather could drop an inch and it, they shut it down. But when we were growing up, remember, like, Harrisburg would never shut school down? Right. My mom said that's because that might have been that child's only day. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's why we had to go to school when every other school shut down. Because yeah. they got to feed them kids. Right. It's sad. It's crazy. I'm getting real comfortable. I took my earrings off. Oh, yeah, crazy. Not, um, yeah, like... It's a season for everything, and in one season of my life, I was, um, you know, volunteering at the at the Boys and Girls Club, and it was crazy to see, you know, little kids, I'm like five, six years old, dragging home cardboard boxes of food, you know what I mean, that they were getting from the Boys and Girls Club, or just coming there for the day and doing activities and participating in different events and things and whatever meal that they had, that was their only meal of the day. Like we need, there's basic things that that we need. Um, and like a lot of our, our black owned businesses are still small. They're still mom and on mom and pop levels. They're not they're not successful and they're not scaling to the point where they're able to create jobs. But if we support them, they can. Right. You know, um, and they have the ability they have the ability to to give back if we support them. But it has to become a lifestyle. It definitely has to become a lifestyle. It definitely has to become a habit. It, so it's, it ain't that we don't have the money to support them. Oh no, we definitely got the chips yeah. is there. The yeah. coins are the yeah. coins are there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can look at somebody and be like, this dude got on four hundred dollars worth of clothes. Yeah. Here this hoe. Yeah. But again, it goes you know what I mean it goes back to these other corporations that fund things that are not in our best interest. Yeah. And they'll they'll disguise it because if you're not really following them, if you're not reading their corporate prospectus and stuff like if you don't know where yeah. your finances are going, yeah. then you don't know that they don't have, you know, any black attorneys. They don't right. have any black account accountants. They don't make any deposits into black owned businesses. Right. But they quick to be like, Oh, but we built y'all a baseball field or we built yeah, y'all a football yeah, yeah, field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or right. we donated helmets. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that kind of stuff. And it's just like, okay, yeah, if on, yeah. on the surface it's yeah. And if you're it's not really paying pictures. attention, you optics, feel like it's a lot. Optics is good for photos, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, okay, we, let's just take it there. All right, so you're looking at the, the relationship between Cap or Nick and Nike. Nike, I wouldn't say Nike is like pro-black or they care about black yeah. issues. Yeah. This Not only is it good optics, Nike wants to be on the right side of history. Right. Because regardless of what you feel about him, was he a good athlete before all this happened? Was he, you know what I mean, is he worth being on the team or any of that? When it comes down to this lawsuit, he won. Right. That's his story. So you know, yeah. Nike want to be on the right side of history. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and all this social activism, it's money in that too. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the, the popular social activists, you know what I'm saying, they're funded by certain, you know what I mean, 
special interest groups and stuff like that. It like the money out here is crazy. Right. Right. The money out here is crazy. So it's like if you got it, be mindful of it. You know what I mean? I'm 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 not gonna sit here and, and chastise you because you wear polo or you wearing right. this or you wearing that, whatever. But it's not hard to support black owned businesses. Not nearly as hard as one would think it is. Right. It has to be a habit. You know what I mean? Your your first instinct when you run out of dishwasher detergent is to run to Walmart. Or, that's your first right. instinct. But if you plan, like if you plan ahead, these these are the products I know I can get from black owned businesses. Right. And on average, I use this and much. There's a black owned detergent. business that sells this detergent and laundry detergent. There's right? like seven or eight right. of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. You can follow me on YouTube. I actually okay. did I actually did a review. I did a comparison of six different black-owned businesses that sell laundry detergent. I, I literally went to a local laundromat. I took just plain fabric, poured barbecue sauce on them, put, like, tore them into different sheets, you know what I mean, through the sheets in different brush machines, and I tested each one, like, side-by-side -side comparison. And it's on my YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's businesses out mm -hmm. here that have your basic everyday needs. There's black-owned business, a black-owned business that uh, sells condoms. And I'm not saying, like, it's, it's a black-owned business selling Trojans. No, this is a black-owned business who's manufacturing their own condoms. Dish detergent, uh, batteries, uh, 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 What's some things called uh, clippers, yeah. Um, yeah. disposable um, blades. It's all kinds of desire for your your everyday needs. Because I think we kind of get caught up in hair, jewelry, clothes, and it's just like, okay, if a black owned business sells clothes I, and I don't like that style, I'm not gonna buy it. I can't. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna argue with you about yeah, that. Preference. Because you have a preference, I'm not gonna argue with you about that. But if you if you plan ahead and say, okay. Every two months, I run out of paper towel. It's, paper, it's a company out here, black-owned business that sells paper towel. So I know I can order it ahead of time. You see what I'm saying? Right. Let's even I actually did a, a review of a business that's not 100% black-owned, but they have a black partner. Mm -hmm. And the company is called um, Real Paper. It's toilet paper made out of bamboo. Okay. I mean, it's, it's totally it's legit. It's it's nice. I mean, actually, it's it's like three ply toilet paper. It ain't thin. You know what I'm saying? It's not thin. I mean, it's legit. Um, but yeah, you can go to their website and you can actually schedule it in advance. Like you can order it in advance, and they'll just ship it directly to your house. You know what I mean? It's businesses that are operating on that level. That's another like misconception. Like we we undervalue our black owned businesses, and we think we can get it from them in bulk too. And you can get it from them in bulk. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And businesses in there, some businesses have taken a route where, you know what I mean, I, I don't want to do the just households. Now I'm looking for contracts. Right. Contracts with schools, universities, right. government right. contracts, right. stuff like that. I mean, that's another route to go <clears throat> to. But you're like, you're every, like toothpaste, mouthwash, you know what I mean? Yeah. Face cream, grooming products, like all that kind of stuff. It's black owned businesses out there. Quite a few. There's a lot of competition out there, especially mm -hmm. like in like the. Uh, Bath and body industry and the the beauty industry, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. So who, of who's out more there. hip to this stuff? Like your your is it your bigger cities or your southern states and cities who have more of a black population? This is this is the thing, and this is why I, I love doing what I do in Harrisburg because it isn't a lot of black owned businesses. I feel as though that I'm the type of person that reflects those communities that don't have black owned businesses. Okay. So like if you're in Philly or you're in Atlanta. You you're in Chicago, stuff, right? you're in Detroit. You in the know. Because there's <laughs> black people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Successful. Successful. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think you're hip. But if you live in West by God, East by Jesus, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of feel like, I, ain't no black owned businesses out here. So you're not going to make me feel bad for going to Walmart or going to Target. And I'm like, sis, bro, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. What I am trying to do is put you on a game and say, you know what I mean, you're not alone in feeling like I live in a community that doesn't necessarily reflect me, even though I see people like me, right. you know what I mean, at work and passing right. in school, right. but not necessarily in business. Right. I'm saying, I I'm trying to make it easier for you. Okay. I'm trying to make buying black simple for okay. you. So if you're following me on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, 
you know what I mean? If you subscribe to my newsletter, I'm trying to make it easy You're for you. You're connecting dots. I'm trying to connect dots. But then I also, you know what I mean? I share business tips with people. You know what I mean? Like, we, we have publications that have been in business for years, like Black Enterprise, Essence. You know what I mean? So I try to share, like, News One. Like, I try to share that information as well. Because if you're not following them, then you're not going to be in a no. Like, if you only follow on Gucci Mane, well, right. then that's why you so. That's why you don't know where you can find black on toothpaste. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of got to broaden your reach. You know what I mean? I, like earlier, like last week, I put a post on Facebook and I said, you know, if you start searching for black owned businesses, like in Google, like you Google search black owned business or on Facebook or whatever social media platforms you're using, you'll start to see more black owned businesses populate your, your news feed. Yeah. Because and that's the one like plus side of the feds like following us on everything you know like if we have if me and you having a conversation right now about i don't want to say super bowl super bowl is summer but if we having a, a conversation about crystal water by the time we done with this and it's i'm going to look at my phone again it's going to pop up on your news right. feed right so right. if you know what i mean you start having more conversations about black owned businesses if you start doing more google searches searching on instagram hashtags like use your hashtag hashtag black owned business on twitter on whatever social media feed that you know what i mean you choose to, to use you'll start to see those things start to populate mm, okay. so the information will come to you you don't okay. you know what i mean you don't have to go out there and spend hours and hours and hours trying to find toothpaste yeah. Cause I'm here, got you. Yeah. That's my thing. That's what That's I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See. 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 <laughs> no, so, so how? So, so, okay. Did you like study communications journalism? Like, what did you study to get you into to some of this stuff? Or? I did. Um, I have a bachelor's degree from Elizabeth Town College, mm -hmm. and I go to an HBCU. Lord Jesus, cause that that's like a cult. Almost to me, in my personal opinion, it's just like you ain't go to HBCU. Ah, like people want, like they don't want to deal with you if you ain't go to HBCU. I'm like, excuse me, hello. Um, but yeah, I went to Elizabeth Town College and um, I got my bachelor's degree in corporate communications, which is like a hybrid at the time. Um, it's like journalism, social media, graphic design, um, public relations. It's all of that. Like it was all of that coursework study in in one program. So when all this social media stuff and all this blogging, all this hit the fan, you were already. I was, I was already aware of it, but I wasn't really interested in it gotcha. to that degree. But it was just like this fire just lit in me. Like I'm really tired, especially when I was working in politics. When I was working um, in legislation, um, when I started working in politics, and I really was like in the thick of thin things, and I saw the things that were getting money. Okay. You know what I mean? I worked for a lobbying firm. Um, in a lobbying firm, basically, you, you pay them to connect you with politicians. They're like middlemen, basically. Okay. Um, and if you have an agenda and you're trying to push it, whether it's, you know, I feel like my community needs, you know, more fire trucks. Or I feel like my neighborhood needs a stop sign. Or even to the point where you're like a, a corporation is like, I want a tax break. I need to get next to this legislator so that I can get it. That's what, ba that's what they basically do. And when I started to see... Um, these people out here getting this money. I was like, why are we not? Why, why, why are we not getting this? So I started doing my research, and I did find that there are some um, super PACs, um, political action committees, which is basically just random people who get together. Like, we have a special interest. We're going to pull our funds and buy that politician over there. Okay. Yeah, it is some out there that exists. But when I seen it, I was like, it's not a lot of black PACs. It's not a lot of black super PACs. It's, okay. it, it's just not. But it's just like, well, it's not because we don't got the money like that. You know what I mean? Like, I had another guest on my platform. He teaches people how to create investment clubs. And it's like, um, I, think he's, I think he charges something like $500, you know what I mean, to help you incorporate, get your paperwork and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's like, I, I, he really talked about, you know what I mean, just the, the, the power in numbers. You know what I mean? The more of us that, you know what I mean, pull our resources together, the more we, we can accomplish. He's been in his um, investment club for like 15 years, and they have stopped. And all the things that we see, stock prices going up and up and up. It's like, dang, I, at this point, I ain't never going to get Amazon stock. Like, it might have been, fit, if I couldn't afford it at 1500 last month, it's on its way to 2000 now, you know. But if we pull our resources together, we'll all have a nice payout and be able to retire on the beach together. Right, right, right. Same, we can do the same thing politically, you know what I mean? We can pull our resources together um, and get these politicians to really, truly advocate for us. Like, right now, what I'm seeing, this whole thing, with day president... I'm not claiming that dude. But they president, they done got to the point where like we don't need no jury, we don't need no evidence, we don't need nothing. 
Like, I was like, wow, that's what y'all do? Yeah. But who's going to be, who in November is voting them people out? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because if we don't do anything, all we got is all we ever going to have. I think a lot of people still get misconstrued that um, the real election isn't the presidential one. It's the senators and the it House is. representatives. It is. But the, they propped the president up, though. You see what I'm saying? And this is the dude who's representing us internationally. Okay, got you, got you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yes, our local elections matter. They matter on a on an individual basis. We're talking about our tax dollars and, you know what I mean, having access to health care and whether or not the hospital was five minutes away or 15 minutes away. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that absolutely matters. But this dude is out here creating wars. I got a 17 year old. My baby's in 11th grade. He get ready to be a senior next year. And this time last year, I didn't have a problem if my son told me, "Mom, I think I want to go to the Navy. Or, I want to think I want. I think I want to go to the Air Force." I didn't have a problem with that because I'm looking at dollars. Yeah, everything's chill too. You know what I'm saying? Everything yeah. is chill. You know what I mean? I'm looking at you know what I mean stability. Like okay, if you have a career in the military, these are kind of beneficial. Get woo woo woo. And my son wants to do welding. You know. So I'm like, okay, that that would be yeah, a really yeah, good yeah, career yeah, field for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's money in welding. welding. Right. Yes, there's, yeah. It's a lot of money in welding. And my kid being my kid, he want to do like underwater welding. I need a lot of <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, so now I'm on, you know what I mean? I'm clearly doing my mom thing, doing my research, whatever. And I'm like, dang, he got to go to the Gulf of Mexico or he got to go to Alaska somewhere or something like that. So I, at the time, I didn't have a problem with my kid going into the military. But now, ain't no way I'm sacrificing Until my Until January 2nd. Bruh, ain't no way I'm <laughs> sacrificing my kid. So that politicians can continue mm -hmm. to sit back and get rich and continue to, to vote in their own best interest. I'm not sacrificing my kid for y'all. No. Absolutely not. Guess what? Bro, we're going to start our own welding company. Yeah, we're going to figure something else out. Yeah. We're going to do, some, yeah. we gonna do yeah. something. We're going to start our, we definitely going to start our own thing. You get all the certifications, everything you right. need. I got the rest. Don't right. worry about it. We'll get some experience with the union. Get your, right. chop, get your chops up and then... Boom, and we're, and we're done. Cause yeah, we'll figure it out. All this other stuff, we're not finna do all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not doing it. But that's where I'm at with it, like, at this point. When I've, when I've seen, I don't want to say corruption, because it's not. Because technically, it's all legal. Yep, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's, all, it's all legal. But that's how the laws are set up. They, they designed it in a way where they can't lose. Right, right. And it's been like that since they... And it's been like, like that since yeah. they... Constitution. It's <laughs> been like that from the beginning. So now it's like, okay, how do we play the game and win the same way they win it? Because the moment they start Is to see... possible? That's the thing. It's just like in football. Like, they start seeing us advance. They switch the rules up. Right, right. Yeah. And that's... Can't and that's the quarterback. <laughs> right. All that... All the rules they start making yeah. up, so then that's that's why it's so important to have legislators that are already there to say, "Nah, bro, we not we not finna switch the rules up now because people who look like me are winning." Right. You know what I mean? Same thing. Like for example, medical marijuana. You know what I'm saying? I'm noticing in cities like Detroit, like Baltimore, um, definitely out west coast. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It it's e it's a lot easier for people of color to it's a lot easier for people. Period. To you know, what I mean, get licensing to grow, to just to oh, just well. to grow, to manufacture, to yeah. package, yeah. to distribute, all of that. It's a lot easier in PA to get the license. You first of all, the license is like ten thousand. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta have like fifty thousand in escrow. You know why they set them numbers that high so that people like me and you can't yeah. get in? Yeah, yeah. And then you then that's when you start seeing companies from other states, Florida. Texas. And they, and they probably make it to where you can't go get the license somewhere else. They treat it like other licenses. Yeah. Right. That's you can't, like you can't go get it somewhere else. However, you can't go get it somewhere else, but other states can come here, though. Right. So then you got people, like I said, from Florida, from Texas, from other states, they making money hand over fist. Right. Because they already got their, and that makes it attractive to get a license here. Because you can say, I have licensing in this state, this state, in this state. It's, cra it's crazy. They, the rules are definitely set up so that they win. But it, there's still a level of it's 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 access. That's what it comes down to having access. Do you think a lot of the stuff you're talking about when it comes to PA is because we're also a commonwealth? Hell yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Some people it's don't realize like, that. They don't realize that we, granted, we are a state, but we're not a state. We're a freaking commonwealth. Like, we're, it's like the wild, wild west here. We play by a different set of rules, right? It's, it's literally like the wild, wild west. We set up our own rules. Like, mm -hmm. being a commonwealth in layman's terms it's just like saying yeah we want fed money because we want block yeah, grants right. and we want this and we want that but we not finna follow none of y'all rules right, right? 
Like it's so yeah, gangster it's here. A lot of com- not a lot of Commonwealth states, but it's a handful. It's a handful of Commonwealth states, but you know what I mean. Like it has they to, make like, their own laws too. Make like. their own laws. <laughs> make, make their own laws. Make their own rules. Like it's it's crazy, but I mean it's it's not crazy if you are willing to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. you're if you're willing to play the game and take the chances. And take the chances, then you can come out. But again, like I said, when you when you start winning and you start distancing distancing yourself from the struggle, distancing yourself from the movement, bro, we was betting on you too with our votes, with our dollars, with you know what I mean, our campaigning, whether we was going door to door or or answering phones for you. Right. And you sought us out. Mm. That's the risk that you take. You know what I mean? It's 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 a tough game, but I personally think it's worth it because the system's not going nowhere unless we have a handful of people who's willing to burn this thing down and yeah. start all over. Yeah, right. Like that's me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm to that point. Okay. Like burn this down. We start all over again because if you really really sit down and think about it, everything that's quote unquote innovative that we have right now that came from us. Right. These white people can't survive without us. Right. They just can't because they ain't invent nothing. Right. Like you can't. You're not gonna say it. like that's one word. I hate. I hate to hear like supremacy, white supreme. Where are they supreme or superior at? Ain't no. You're not. I'm not even referring to you as supreme or superior. When it was my people that teach you how to wash your ass. I'm not doing that. You don't know how to season your food. Y'all ain't even have enough common sense to know y'all ain't supposed to lay with y'all animals. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all the ones out here creating plagues and sicknesses and viruses and everything, everything else yeah. for yeah. your own yeah. people. They will kill your own people. They will. They will definitely do that. You see that? You know what I mean? Just in healthcare, you see that in in their voting patterns. They will kill their own people. They don't care. For them, it's not like a black or white thing. Yeah, it's it's a, class it's a thing. power yeah, it's thing. A power it's thing. very much. It's a very yeah. much a power it's thing. It's very thing. much a, a class type system. Yeah. Yeah. And for them, the white people who are poor are just as bad as black people. Yeah. Yeah. Trump don't yeah. fuck with them either. <laughs> he don't. Right. He don't. But he speak. But he speaks to their insecurity. Yeah. The, the blue. The white blue collar workers. I mean, just if we look at take police. For example, mm-hmm. police is started as clay, like slave catching. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. To catch slaves. So it was like the white people who were in power told the poor white people, you don't you don't have the same kind of power we got. Because right. you don't got the right. same kind of money we got. Right. But what we'll do is we'll put you in in a position of authority over them color people over there. That's and that's mm-hmm. the thing. He speaks to their fear, he speaks to their insecurity, he speaks to to their the the thought that has been already implanted in them that all of their problems, the reason why they're poor white trash is because of all these colored people out here. Yeah. He speaks to that. And he and, and, and it resonates with them and that's why they keep voting against their own best interests. Like, bro, you already got three teeth. You really about to vote against having decent health care? Right. <laughs> you, know, you already got diabetes and you're ready to get your foot cut off. You really going to vote against decent health care? You right. really going to vote against having access to the internet? You yeah. really going to vote against having clean water? That's what you really yeah, want to do? You'll vote against your best interests. You'll vote against, against, yeah. Yeah. You'll vote against your, your best interests because you feel as though yeah. that, you know, people are crossing the border or somebody's getting something that you feel as though that you should have I'm in the construction field they don't like the Latin the Latin Hell culture no. but the same ones that don't like them that work for, for my company mm-hmm. for my family company mm-hmm. those same foremen who talk that shit have been telling me over the last year year and some change they can't find good workers as mm-hmm. far as electricians plumbers you know what I mean they, I've watched foremans get pissed off because their their white counterparts who are working for them are fucking his job sites up. Whereas you got my guys who you a bitch about mm-hmm. are fucking performing, mm-hmm. are working ten hours, That's are like you know what I mean, getting way more done in a day. And if we do have a mistake, it's a, it's a, it's an issue that can get fixed like that. Because I think what happened with the quote unquote American dream, <laughs> what happened with the American dream is the American dream became entitlement. Mm. Mm-hmm. They've gotten away from work ethic. Mm-hmm. They feel like, yeah, I'm a, I should, I should be able to drive a Benz working at Walmart. Right. Like that's that's the mentality because because we've been telling ourselves generation after generation after generation that you're entitled to the American dream. Yeah, you're entitled to what you work for. Right. Period. Now I'm not one that's quote unquote for 
immigration mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm for coming to this country the right way. Mm -hmm. However, what I'm not for is y'all making all these obstacles for you to get here the right way. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm not yeah. for. Like, that's ridiculous. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the cost of, of an immigration attorney and the waiting list. And you got to have 10 family members that already live here and all yeah. that old crazy stuff. When y'all, when first and of all. France and Italy and all that. And on top of that, they sent the worst of the worst here. Yeah. Like, you know, they was, and right, and right, like, right. When they were send, <laughs> sending people to America, yeah. they were sending criminals yeah. and rapists. Yeah. And, and that was who was, uh, yeah. Right. And people, yeah. That's, that's how the mafia got rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean? They were sitting sick, like one eye willy and all that, like mm -hmm. them. Niggas couldn't breathe. Yeah, that's the Godfather. Yes. yes. That's how it was, right? That's what, exactly. And and them, over here. Send them over there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the P, oh, you got a short arm. Or, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> right, when you could <laughs> Like, when it, like, you know, physical defects mm -hmm. and when they, back, we call it autism now, but back then, you know what I mean, yeah. when they were just calling people crazy and yeah. putting them in asylum, that's who they were sending to America. So you really... Really, you know what I mean? Want to say founding fathers and yeah, all this yeah. other stuff, but yeah, you don't want nobody. You're rejects of your country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're a reject. You're, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're the descendant of a reject. Yes, but you don't want nobody else to come here. You're a descendant of a reject, and you can't figure out why you why your life is a mess. Right. Because you, that's the thing. Like they feel entitled. Like yeah, I should go to work, but I should make. You know, what I mean, at minimum fifty thousand a year. I should live in this certain type type of neighborhood. I should drive this certain type of car. Whereas other people who's coming here, are like yeah, whether it's Mexican, whether they're African, whether the they're Indians, Asian, or, the Indians or Indians come or whatever, they get right to it. They get right to it. You know what I'm saying? Muslims, I don't watch them build whole mosques by themselves. Yeah. They got their little permits, paperwork. Yeah. What am about their business? Hammer, nail, wood. I ain't seen no drywall. I ain't seen a cement truck. Nothing. But yeah. they got a mosque up like a mug. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they be 10, 12 of them living in the same crib. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, they'll take they'll take the um the more difficult route in the beginning to get to. Absolutely. You know, and then it's, um like, I see Indian guys. We do a, a hotels for some of them. Mm -hmm. And they pull their resources. Say, say, it's 10 of us in this room. It's no. your turn to build a hotel. We all going to put up. So bread. We all to get the with. hotel. But at the same time, they also know how to flip though. Mm -hmm. They'll come here and they'll work a minimum wage job because they already know I can take this hundred dollars, send it back to my community, and that a hundred dollars a hundred to us is like ten to them. Right. And now easily they got a thousand dollars to buy resources and everything else. And that ain't to save up enough money to send cousin so and so over here. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So now I'm making minimum wage, cousin so and so making minimum wage. We keep sending like we living in a room. Buy, yeah. They're not buying. But we, they not. Yeah. They not overdosing on Disney Plus and Netflix yeah. and Hulu. Yeah. Shit yeah. about that. They don't. Ha they, they not on none of that. Right. They not trying to flex. They just want they food. Right. They don't be able to cook. They they want to take a masala and and, 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 and pray five times a day. <laughs> mind their business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Chickpeas, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. Really basic. The, their lifestyle is very very basic. So if they bring it home a hundred, they gonna keep ten. They send in 90 back. Mm -hmm. That 90, they turn back home. They turn into 900. And they just keep saving until so-and-so and so-and-so can come back over here. And that's and that's what they're doing. And it's like, we don't have that luxury. We don't have that liberty. Yeah, so we here. have to pull our re we have to pull our American dollars the right. best way that we can. Right. Right. And so we have to support black-owned businesses. We have to elect politicians who are not going to lose sight of the vision when they start to get success. When they start to get, you know, I mean, certain laws and bills and legislation passed, like we have to, you know, like we gotta keep, we gotta hold their feet to the fire and be like, look, bro, don't forget where you came from, and we gotta kick it to them like that. Yeah. I think it's like it's we talk way too soft on a lot of like hard issues. I think we're, I don't think we serious enough. Like I, I tell people all the time, I love the Lord, but I got hood tendencies and gangster undertones. Like you can get this, right? You know what I mean? Because I think <laughs> because because it's to the point where that's what it's. In, in my soul, takes. not just that's what it takes, but in my heart of heart, in my soul, I feel like we are on the edge of civil war. Okay. Yeah. You're the second person I heard say that this week. I, well, feel, I, I feel it. I feel I feel that Trump, Trump gave some of, some of the white folks who were probably closet racist or whatever you want to call it, he gave them this like, boost of confidence. Yeah, that like, yeah. they were, well, we, I, I told you this on this show where I've had a, a, a guy tell um, my dad, my brother, and I, and we have all these different shades. We're, we're mixed or whatever mm -hmm. uh, with, with Latino and black and Native mm -hmm. American. But anyway, he said to us, like, I ain't got a problem with you guys. It's your Mexicans I can't stand. 
So you say that in public. And what do you think about blacks in the, in the in the background? Or what do you say with you wasn't talking to us? You know what I mean? Like, and we've been we've been socially conditioned to laugh at stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and then when we don't check them, when we don't check them, that's another that, green yeah, light. You don't want to fuck the money up by. You know what? Not only, not only that, we have way too much to lose. We don't want to fuck up the money. Cause we can't fuck up the church's money. We can't mm -hmm. do that. Right. We don't want to mess up the money. And nobody wants to put their liberty and their life on the line. For, somebody's for, something, for something that somebody just said. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm going to let that slide for now. But trust yeah. and believe me, my aim is on point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So you come knocking on my door with that. It's definitely going to be a problem. I'll leave by the piled up on the porch so y'all know this is not where y'all want to come with, right. with that craziness. Right, right. But I really, in my heart of heart, I really feel like we we are on the cusp of mm -hmm. the civil war. So my question, um, even with sometimes I, I, that might be necessary. Oh yeah, it is necessary. It needs to be torn down. Like, like so yeah, it's yeah. built on it's built on, on the blacks being three fifths of a man still. Yeah, so <laughs> not just that, but it's just like if you know, because I mean, we're from this this area, so mm -hmm. you know, you know, I mean, you ever drive through Lancaster, and I'll never yeah. forget the one time I actually seen a whole field on fire. Like I seen it really? in a movie before, but I had never seen it in person. Yeah, they, okay. And then one, you know, I mean, one night I'm, I'm driving through, um, and I actually seen a field on fire. And I remember, you know, what I mean. Learning and, and being told that you know, what I mean, like it's certain times where you got to scorch the earth and basically start all over mm -hmm. again. I can see that we, to a certain degree, we need that because yeah. they're not taking any accountability for mass incarceration. They're not taking any accountability yeah. for the drug trade. They're not taking any accountability for the uh, preschool to prison pipeline. They're not taking any accountability for how black men are treated in this country. Right. Because now, this is another thing, and I know. Sisters is not trying to hear it. I understand like right now you look on social media and whatnot and you know black women is killing it Killing it killing it killing it. Yeah, we said that a lot last year And it's yeah. cool and then I don't have a problem with it because clearly I'm a woman, you know, what I mean, but I know when it comes down to the come down And it comes down to this civil war like I need my black men I need somebody that's gonna be out here like on these front lines to make sure, I'm safe, yeah. to make sure that I'm safe so I can't put myself in a position where I know logically that these white men are giving black women all of these opportunities to mm -hmm. spite y'all. Mm -hmm. I know that. Right. I see it. For me, it's blatant and it's very, very okay. obvious. Well, it's, okay. it, it, it's very, very okay. obvious. You know what I mean? Like, five years ago, ten years ago, HBO wasn't handing out contracts to people like Issa Rae. This chick got started. Okay. This chick got started on YouTube. Mm -hmm. okay. HBO wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? Away from, uh, Showtime. They weren't doing that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like and she's a lesbian. And she's a lesbian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's there's this trend of we don't gotta deal with black men because we can placate black women. And I'm not saying that we should not honor, we should not celebrate the successes right, right. of our black women. What I'm saying is, while we're celebrating, we also have to be sure that we bring our black men who support us with us. This is, trust and believe me, just like there's a lot of females out here that ain't shit, there's a lot of black men out here that ain't shit. Yeah. But for those who are holding down for their families, go to work every day, provide, you know what I mean, providing, protecting, praying those men, like we can't disregard them. We, we just can't. But that's where the, that's where this world system is taking mm -hmm. us, okay. and what they're what they're really doing is they're tearing down our defenses before the war starts. Okay. Well, then, because they already <laughs> know we can't defend ourselves. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I could defend myself to a certain degree, but I, I can't defend myself like my man can defend me. Right. So, right. Let me ask you something, because the whole burn the system down theory and, and, and thoughts it, it seems like the most logical reason because. You ever look at everything and feel like overwhelmed because Every day. yeah we gotta fix the system mm -hmm. but then you almost have to go back and fix the people uh, uh, mentally right. emotionally yeah, like definitely. you know what I mean so you gotta start from from scratch literally like absolutely and that's what burning down the system would do yeah, it yeah. would allow us to it would allow us to start from scratch the reason why we scared to burn the system down is because you scared you gonna lose your creature comforts. Mm. If I burn the system down, I can't get on Snapchat. 
<laughs> if, I, if I burn the system down, I'm not going to have a Lexus, or I'm not going, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be able to go to Miami, or I'm not going to be able to yeah, go because to, a lot that's of, what it is. A lot of the city folks are, don't know how to hunt fish and, and, and have gardens, too, so it's right. like, you're giving up that, they too. Nobody wants to give up their creature comforts. Okay. And nobody wants to be, nobody wants to, to sacrifice. Nobody wants to be the one to die. You know what I'm saying? If, if we go into the Civil War nine times out of ten because I can't hunt fish, I can't do nothing. I'm, you ever seen that movie, um, The Reverend? So I mean, just, you, I just that watched that. Like survival wouldn't kick in. You think some people? No. Have it? Yeah. You see these lace fronts running around here? Yeah, that's. <laughs> you see, you see these? You I, see, I would be thinking it was something see, that would kick in. You like, see these skinny jeans running around here? Yeah, but yeah. some people don't even know how to use a a fishing rod. How are they gonna make something out of something else? You know what I mean? Like. Like my I don't know how to hunt and fish, and, I, and like as the years go by, I'm 32, about to be 33. And the years goes on, I'm like, you better learn how to do some of this shit, because if this shit hits the fan, right. how do you want to protect your wife and kids? Right, absolutely. But then you got then I and then the thing about it is as messed up is it's not everybody, but we got some some guys in the in the in the inner city who have that uncle or that homie who knows how to do that stuff, and we think he's weird. Right, absolutely. He's a country boy. He's, like, well, that's the guy we need. No, <laughs> he's, 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 he's either no, seriously, he's, he's either a country boy or he's a neighborhood crackhead. Yeah, yeah. he said, he said. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's a crackhead because he's out here fixing his cars. <laughs> like, he's surviving. He's, he's surviving. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, that's that's why. We need him. Because you know, I got an uncle that, like, he's been going hunting for you just like one of my dad's best friends. But see, this is what you do. I ain't going to hunt with you. Yeah, you, yeah, you want to. I need to. What right. the fuck? Yeah, we, we need to learn these things, but you got to put your team together. Right. Like, in my mind, I know if it go down, I know who my top five are. You know what I'm saying? I know my sister's clearly on my team because she's a nurse. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, my god brother, he's definitely on my team because he he collects guns like I got a god brother like that. He got a stockpile. Yeah, right. He's been collecting for years. Like, yeah, collecting he, for years. He got a stockpile. And building them up and buying right. ammo. <laughs> um, I got one one of my brothers. I got a couple brothers, but one is definitely on the team mm -hmm. because he got that carpentry skill. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? My son's on my team just by genetics of these minds. Yeah, you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? He's cuffed. by default. He, he's <laughs> cuffed, you know what I'm saying, by default. And then um, probably my dad, you know what I mean? Because he has a leadership yeah. type. He has a leadership yeah, quality. You know what I'm saying? He'd be the one that when we start panicking, he going to come out with the, with the you know, the, 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 the coach mm -hmm. motivating right, speech. Right, right. right. Like now nah, we need to pull together and get this yep. fish. Nah. Right, like you yeah. know what I'm saying? He's got that. But that would that would be my team. You know what I'm saying? Like I know I can't do it. Like I said, I don't know CVR. I don't I don't give blood. That's why I do none of that. Jeremiah, That's why I was when I do that two weeks ago. <laughs> when I was watching The Walking Dead, I was like, Besides, if you remove the zombies, that's it. If you remove the zombies, <laughs> that's when you would want to start because. The system's tore down. Absolutely. There's no one. There's no one in charge. Your status of being means nothing. And if I was on the Walking Dead, I'm the dude walking around with the bat with the chain on it. Yeah. Cause that's where my. Cause that I'm the survivor. I'm not Rick. I'm right. not out here trying to save people. Right. Or none of that. You get down or lay down. Right. Pick a struggle. Yeah. We will fight. Like right. that's it. Cause we have yeah. limited resources. Right. We have yes. Limited, right. You know what I'm saying? Limited so knowledge. Limited everything. So it's like you either come get on this squad. Or I'm taking you out. Mm -hmm. That's where my mind is. Right. But it's like when it comes down to like when is this civil war thing happening? Am I acquiring the skills like how to plant, how to you know right. grow, yeah. how to yeah. you know what I'm saying, how to shoot, how to bow and arrow, like all that, all them type of survival skills. Like yeah, my team's already together in my mm -hmm. mind already. The team, mm -hmm. you gotta build your team up. But I think that's what it's gonna come to because we don't. I, my blog is probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my so life. So do you, so do you think ever? Because it is so hard to get people to buy black. It is hard. So, do you Almost to the point where it's every day I'm wondering, like, why do I do this? Do you think they will risk their money to let it get to that? I think they're already doing it, though. Like, they're already playing it. That's why I keep making these these viruses and stuff. They could have fixed Flint, I think. Absolutely. They could have fixed that water crisis. They you they could have fixed it. Yeah, they could have fixed it. Yes, you can fix it when the problem was like a dollar twenty-five. Like that was this. That was like this. The difference between the P PVC pipes okay, or whatever and the old, ass and the old PVC, pipes. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying you were saving like a dollar twenty-five per pipe. Like that's, uh, bro. You out here giving people legionnaire disease for a dollar twenty-five per pipe? Really? He ain't going to jail. But everybody else that was part of his administration went. 
And there's a couple other areas in the in the U.S. that have that issue. They're just not being uh, televised or. Especially down south, Midwest. Like, yeah, there's mm -hmm. a couple other places. I've seen like Louisiana. I've seen um, uh, somewhere out in Missouri, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other places. But yeah, like they created a problem. Clearly they can fix the problem. And do I think that they'll risk everything for that? Absolutely. That's why they Same try to automate. That's why they're trying to automate everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, these people are going to rise up eventually. So we have to starve them. Mm -hmm. We have to poison their food. We have, yeah, to take food away, yeah. we have to take away their job supply. Like, we have to starve these people to death. And then create infighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where they're not blaming us at the top. Right. All of them at the bottom is fighting Population each other. control. It's population control. It's all that. I mean, the same reason why they are real, real slow to let certain countries into the global into the global market. Okay. You know what I'm saying? With tariffs and trade agreements and all this. Oh, because we gotta starve them. Right. You know what I mean? Like the com the country that we can't beat physically, like we can't beat on a militaristic right. strength. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, there's, there's some there's right. countries out there. We have to starve them. Yes, we have to starve them. Okay. That's the money. Like, they're already doing yeah, but it. Yeah, their leaders wear suits and march in the army with, and get their hands dirty. So right. You know them people are powerhouses. So, exactly. Yeah, we get them that way. And they're not afraid to die mm -hmm. for what they believe in. Like, they will blow themselves up. Mm -hmm. All that. They're not afraid to die. We, most black women don't work out because they don't get their hair messed up. Right. We, we're not finna die. For, we're not finna right. die for this. Right. Which, to me, I'm not going to say sounds crazy. But I question that because we built this. Why not die for it? Do some of them know that they built it? I think some people don't know their history. Yeah, there's a there's a gap. Like I'm 32, so with as much knowledge as I have, and still feel like I don't know as right. as much as I should. Right. It's hard for me to. But it's really hard for me to believe that there's people who don't know. But. You, I mean, I I guess know, 26 and younger, 26 and younger, 25 and younger. I don't know what that is. Now, see, when you start talking about, I'm talking about people our age, right? Yeah. right who yeah. don't know. But when you start talking about people like young people, oh, yeah, they know. They don't know. Right. They don't know. Some of it the school's fault. Like, these kids don't get books. I get pissed that there's. They don't know. They really don't. I mean, me, I have a cousin that's a millennial. Like, we on the cusp of being right. millennials. Like, we in between. Right. But I have a cousin who's a true millennial. And I tell them all the time, I hate millennials. They are such little oh, assholes. My son, yeah. oh, my 13-year-old. They are such like, little uh, assholes. I got some shit to teach you, man. Because they really, because they really, um, they are the receivers of all of the sacrifice. Right. And they're so far removed from the struggle because when we was kids and we was coming up, the thing was our parents didn't want us to struggle like they struggled, right. so they gave us everything. You know what I'm saying? Even though... I grew up quote unquote middle class. However, yeah, yeah. however, it was like seven, eight, it was like seven, eight kids in a house. So that easily puts you in poverty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like regardless of what kind of job my mom and my dad had and the kind of money that they made yeah, as a like gang of kids, of because I I came from a blended family. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? So my mom came in with kids. My dad came Brady in. Bunch situation. It was a Brady Bunch type situation. Then my mom and dad got divorced, and then my dad, you know what I'm saying? He married someone else, and she had kids. Oh shit. And we all grew up together. And still, to this day, we don't refer to each other as like step brother or sister. Don't do yeah, we don't do that. That's something they gave. That, that's, that came from them. Yeah, that's, I always say that. I don't know. We, yeah, yeah that we don't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We are brothers and sisters, yeah, period. period. You yeah, know what I mean? Still, yeah. to this day, we grown, got yeah, kids of our own, yeah, all that. Yeah. So, but, you know, when we were coming up, you know what I mean, with so many of us in the house, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's easily like a poverty type, you know what I mean, situation. Yeah. But they still, like, we still had. Sega Genesis. Yep. We had GameCube. We yep. had Nintendo, Nintendo Power Pad. We had Atari. We had it. We had yep. all that. We still went to King's Dominion or Great yep. Adventures every summer. Yep. Like we still had things. You yep. know what I'm saying? But now these kids now, I don't I don't understand the logic of a parent giving a, a six year old an iPhone. I don't understand. I don't understand. My my kid today, seventeen, his cell phone is with me. Cause I pay for it, it's mine. You know what I'm saying? Like he had, I bought it for him for Christmas, and that was his first cell phone. He didn't get a cell phone until just this December. I didn't get one until my senior year of high school. I graduated in '05, right? <laughs> like for real. My son, thirteen. Yeah, I, my granted, I got with his mom when he was nine. So there's certain things I couldn't couldn't do by yourself. Yeah, I can't really say too much. much. 
Yeah, but I, I still would like, bro, you got a like, I'm you got an iPhone. If it was up to me, my kid would have a flip phone. Yeah, like you need to start in the dark ages right. before you. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you that's how. But yeah. these be kids, a kid, be a kid, kid. be a go kid. Out, go outside like we got him a bike. Well, his grandparents got him a bike, whatever. Yeah, be a kid. We used to be on our bikes all fucking day, all the time. He got he gets on his bike. He goes like two laps around the block and he's home already. I'm like, no, what are you? What are you doing back? No, <laughs> you when I was, need to come back. When I was a kid, <laughs> That's a was, glass of water. go outside and stay outside. Yeah. You couldn't even come back in the crib unless you had to go to the bathroom. Yeah, unless it was dinner time or something. like. And wherever you ventured off to, you had to be back before street lights yeah. and all that. But these kids, they're, they're so far removed from, they're so far removed from the struggle. And they claim everything as theirs. Like, yeah, we got iPhones, we got Snapchat, and we got this, and we got that. And it's just like... Yeah, yeah. I do, because... This yeah, bill is killing my ass. Yeah, because like, they would be like, like, you but you, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're reaping the benefits. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't create. Your generation hasn't created yeah, anything. Yeah. anything. Yeah. You didn't create like, oh, any, yeah. nothing. They never like, had to get on aim. Yeah. <laughs> no, they never had dial lock. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You ain't right. had a little right. man, the AOL man, and, man, and a. And if your mom and dad had to get on the phone, you had to get the hell off the internet. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't know the show. Or my dad would get pissed if he's missing a business call because we was on the damn internet. On the internet. Yeah, that forced him to get a cell phone. Like, yeah. And my dad had the cell phone that was in the Bible case. Right. Yes, he was it. Yeah. It's real. Like, they're, they're so far removed. They are so far removed mm-hmm. from that. But they feel like they have a sort of sense of entitlement. You yeah. know what I mean? And to the, to the degree where the sacrifices that were made, they don't feel an impact. Oh, like, one more thing. One more thing. Remember if you missed the show, that was it. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you if, you, if you wasn't watching the Cosby's at eight o'clock on Thursday, it was a wrap. You, burnt. <laughs> You're done. you had to listen to your friends talk about it on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Because you had to see the reruns to the summertime. Exactly. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Or yeah. or like yeah, yeah, it was it was all that. Eight years later, yeah, it was a long time. Yeah. But they have the the millennials have created nothing. You know what I'm saying? They've been able to create things from what we've already established yeah but they haven't created they haven't contributed anything you know what i'm saying like my little cousins was on tiktok i was like this is the dumbest shit i've ever seen in my life what are y'all doing like y'all watch other people dance and then you mimic them dancing what what is that why kids watch kids play with toys like do you want that to i get it for you like why are you watching this it's weird it's as i'm so far like i'm removed from them they're removed from the struggle like to this day if i watch like uh, MLK speech or uh, 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 Malcolm X speech or Maya Angelou speech, like I feel something. Right. Like I like I feel yeah, something. Give a damn. You know what I'm they don't get yeah, they're just damn. Yeah, I mean, I still get chills. Yeah, I get inspiration. Yeah. Like yeah, I still feel something, yeah. and I'm not and I'm not an inspirational, motivational type person. Mm-hmm. Like for me. My motivation for getting out of the bed and doing what I do every day is I got a 17 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, likes things. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he likes things. He likes YouTube. He likes to eat he good. Got college coming up. So that's he got college the next coming up hustle to, 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 to do all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my motivation for getting out of the bed. Yeah. So when I listen to like speeches and, and that kind of that doesn't really move me too much. But there there's a chance. Like, when I, it's for me, it's not even necessarily the speech per se. It's the fact that, all this man or this woman was doing was speaking their mind from their heart for you for you (laughs) like they didn't rob banks they didn't kill people you know what i'm saying but they were so much of a threat you know what i'm saying that their mind because because they had the ability to to take and galvanize marginalized people okay organize they know how to organize organize. coming up on time yep Um, so sure. Tell people where to find your blog, where to find you. Oh, definitely do that. Um, if you are, <laughs> do, that. Sure, do that. No, for sure. If you um, are definitely are looking for more black owned businesses to support, definitely come through to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Minority Report TV show. I interview entrepreneurs and I review products as well. So if you see a black owned product and you're like, uh, I don't know if that's legit or not. Hit me up. I'll review it. Give you my honest opinion. Um, you can also follow me on. Um, we well, actually go to my website, and my links for everything are there. My website is minorityreporttvshow.com, gotcha. and my links for Instagram, for Twitter, for YouTube, for Facebook, all of that is right there. You can follow me. You can also subscribe to my newsletter. I even send you coupons. Yeah, I'm the plug on that too. 
<laughs> I'm the plug on that too. Thank for you for sure. starting February off when January kicked everybody's ass. Yeah, January was rough. I cried. From start to finish, I, well, I still got to cry just lingering back there. I, I didn't get mine out yet. I did. I no. think that I let that out. It's I, I know. I feel like I'm a breakdown one of these days. Like it's coming. <laughs> nah, nah. I cr- and I wasn't even like a, a Kobe fan. I was always an Allen Iverson fan. Mm-hmm. But when when I heard that he and his daughter and everybody else had died, like my first thing that the first thing that came to my mind was, damn, we really lost like a hero. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that he was a perfect man or anything like that, but our kids need to see how you transition. It's over. Yeah, yeah, it's over. Uh, but no, they do. They need to see how they how we transition, how we transition from to <laughs> our, you know, what I mean, transition into success, right. transition into retirement. Like our kids need to see that. You know what I'm saying? They really, really do. They need to see what that type of success looks like. And like I didn't that hard work, right? Like I didn't retire because I OD, or I didn't, re- you know, what I'm saying, or I didn't retire because I couldn't take it in the game no more, right. or I, I retired just because, you know, what I mean, like. The, the trend changed and my 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 flow, you know what I mean, if I'm a rapper or whatever, my flow or is not the style anymore or anything like that. Like people the kids need to see, yeah, you know, like how you progress, how you go from great to great to great. You know what I mean? Right. And that's that was the first thing that that came to my mind, like, damn. We don't have too many examples of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like most people go out over controversy. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or something negative happening to yeah. them or they went bankrupt. Right. Lost all their money. You know what I'm saying? I that was like, damn, this is this that it hurt. hurt. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate you. Yay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you again. Yeah, we gotta bring you back. Alright. For real? I need to come back. We got a couple of repeat offenders. <laughs> How many repeat offenders? Three. Bye y'all. Peace out. <laughs>